It's new time. Okay, first up, hey look, a JavaScript running microcontroller. Yes, this is the new version of the Esperino. Um, you know, honestly, I actually don't remember the specs, the updates. We do have it in the product description. Oh, yeah. But um, it has been updated. Uh, and so we have the, the newest version. I believe they added um, some more uh, pinouts and maybe they even upgraded the processor. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, this has been a busy week. Um, but check it out. This is the Esperino is a JavaScript runnable, running microcontroller. It's an ARM STM32, you can see right here. Um, and it's running pretty fast. It has an 8 megahertz. Uh, crystal, but it's it's clocking it up. I think it's probably running at like at least 30 or 40 megahertz. And it actually uh, has a JavaScript parser inside of it. So you can actually run JavaScript. You can like log into it and run JavaScript, or you can upload code to it and it will run it mm -hmm. as a processor. And and then you can have little JavaScript libraries to do stuff like control NeoPixels or LEDs or sensors. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting thing. I, wanted, I remember like looking at this when we first put it in, and I remember thinking, wow, people who think that um, assembly code is the only way to uh, Right to a processor, and that you know C is Arduino is cheating. This will blow their minds because compared to Arduino, um, Arduino looks like a super bare metal programming. This is actually running a scriptable uh, interpreter. Yeah. Okay. Next up, um, this is finally in stock. This is the Little Bits Cloud Starter Kit. We um, uh, we purchased these and we just got around to finally getting them in the store just in time for the holidays. If you want to do Internet of Things in the easiest, best way possible, especially for young people, this is the Little Bits Cloud Starter. Kit, Little Bits is an open source hardware company run by Aya. Badir. She's yeah. here also here in Soho. So, so. On, oh, no, on, sorry, she's in Chelsea now. On, uh, yeah, on the show lots of times. An amazing woman, an amazing company. If you want to give one of the best gifts out there this year, this is it. They're also available in Radio Shack. Too. This is definitely the easiest way to do Internet of Things. It's very simple and straightforward. There's no soldering. You plug and play. Um, it has Wi-Fi. It's easy to connect up to your network. There's an iPhone and web app that you can use to remotely control stuff. And you can have, um, there's a servo. There's, I think, a light strip. There's probably a switch or a relay. There's a microphone. You can, like, listen for things. So you can have inputs and outputs using um, the Little Bits kit. And what's cool is that, like, yeah, you can, you can be very young and experienced, yeah. new to electronics, and make your own uh, custom Internet of Things product. Okay. Next up, um, this is the coming soon, and you guys can look at our hardware um, hangout that we did before. Um, we, you can look at past shows. The other mill is a very cool kind of mini CNC, and we use it's it. It's not kind of a mini CNC. It is a mini CNC. It's a very CNC. small, yeah, we've had it on the <laughs> show. We had Mike SD, um, the CTO, on the show. We use it for making our circuit board testers. We use it for Yeah, I use it for prototypes. So, and also, so, yeah, it's just a very, very precise circuit yeah, board mill. Very, it's a, very precise. It's a coming soon. We have it in the store. We think they're going to sell very fast, so sign up now. Yep. Okay. And we have accessories for it. We're also going to get circuit boards and stuff when we get the other mills in. Um, I got one. I got actually got it you know, on the Kickstarter, and I was like one of the, we like rushed to be one of the mm -hmm. first people to get it because I wanted to get it early. And it's awesome. We use it every single day here, day here at Adafruit. Yeah. Compared to other circuit board mills, this one actually works. Um, yeah. It can drill and cut. It has, you know, the ability to like you can dynamically see it working. The software runs on a Mac. And it's like flawless. Yeah. Um, this is a joy to use, and I'm probably gonna get another one for the lab. So okay. we have two. So All I don't right. know. Next up, suggested. Other these, I got two books that we just put in. The Encyclopedia of Electronics, Volume Two. By Platt. By Charles Platt, one of the best books out there. Uh, we have Volume One, so why not put in Volume Two, Charles Platt? Um, is probably the best living writer um, about things like this right now. Fantastic book. Okay, next up, got another book. This one uh, we did a coming soon, but now it is in stock. Building open source hardware. This is actually from we sold we sold out. We sold out already. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations, Alicia. You can say a Adafruit bestseller. Yeah, we're going. We don't actually have one because we sold the last one. Yeah. Okay. They forgot to save one for me. All right. Sorry. And. But it's all about building uh, open source hardware. Yeah. And like the process behind it, interviews with people. Yeah. It's a very detailed book. A lot of really good information. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I think that there's even we have a, a chapter excerpt. Are we linked to one. Well, I, I. We we tried to get a chapter done. We just didn't, we ran out. No, no, no. We we have an excerpt that you can read. Yes. So, <laughs> 
I feel bad. Phil, about why it. haven't you done everything? I feel bad about it. Okay. okay. All right. That's okay. Next Sorry. Up. All right. Next up. Well, Krampus does say you're the worst person. Do yeah. Do you want to do the Sailies next? Uh, yeah, we're going to do Sailies next. Okay. And then some Ellie. Yeah, we just yeah. got a lot of do stuff. Do the Sailies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, are, so here it is. Good. What are they? What is a Sailie? What is a Sailie? These are the Sailie Logic Analyzer. And we used to carry the Sailie Logic 8 and 16. And those have actually been discontinued and upgraded. They now have more better and this is the logic 4 and we also have the logic 8 pro yeah and here's what's updated so first off they're as good as the old sales but they're much faster and you can check the specs on the product page because i remember all the specs and not only that but the logic 4 has an analog input as well so not only oh. is it digital um logic analyzer i just wanted to go oh stop <laughs> it's also a oscilloscope so it's a usb oscilloscope one channel oscilloscope as well as a, as a high speed logic analyzer so it's very good for when you're looking at multiple digital signals and you maybe want to watch the like power supply line as well to see if you're getting glitches because your power supply is drooping and the pro 8 has eight channels of analog um, slash digital, so each pin can be digital or analog. On um, the Sailay Logic 4, only one pin. So this, uh, there's a price difference for that reason. But the Logic 4 is like a really great deal. I think it's like a hundred bucks. It's like this is an excellent, excellent tool to have. Yeah. I use my Sailor all the time whenever I'm um, doing logic analysis. When I was like debugging these LED strips or the matrices, having a logic analyzer and their software is like top notch and works on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Um, really, really suggested. This is like the best logic analyzer. I haven't quite tried the analog oscilloscope part of it, but um, I'm sure they did an excellent job. And we'll be carrying the other two types of Sele, the missing, there's a 16 and the Logic 8. Yeah. We'll get those as well. These are the first two that came in from our shipment. Check it yeah. out. Hopefully we'll have them on the show soon as I well. I have big news. They're gonna be oh. on a special hardware hangout. Okay, great. We'll do hardware hangout in, with them? In January. Um, these guys are uh, super cool. It's not open source hardware, but it's it's really beautifully well designed, and yeah. it, uh, it is used to make open source hardware. Yeah, I like these guys a lot. They always post about their business. Yep. And uh, I really like that about. They have them. a zebra printer. Okay. Okay. Um, which one do you want to do next? Next up, let's go to now. We're on to Blinky stuff, right? We let's got do a lot. the let's do the matrices. Matrices, welcome to the matrix. You took the right pill. <laughs> Stop. Uh, these are the 16 by 32 matrices, and I'm actually going to start with the biggest one, and I'll show it on the, um, I, I won't use the overhead, I'll just show it uh, upright, because it's big, but let me plug it in. These are um, 16 by 32, sorry, 32 by 64 LED matrices, these are massive LED matrices, these are used to make um, those giant LED displays that you see on like Times Square, like if you were in Times Square next week. Um, so, hold on. Upside down. It is beautiful One to, second. Be to behold. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So this is using an Arduino Mega. I do want to note that we have um, a tutorial for the 16 by 32 version of these, the one that's one quarter the size for Arduino Unos, but the Mega has enough memory and the Uno does not. So, um, so you can see this is the six pitch display. So there's six millimeters between the pixels and each one is an RGB LED. And you do have to clock each row real time. So they're not like NeoPixels or dot stars where the controller kind of takes care of the PWM for you. You have to manually PWM it. So you need like 13 pins and you clock out all the data very, very fast. Really excellent if you have an FPGA or CPLD to help you. You can also, there's a BeagleBone um, code for it that uses the PRU, so it's like self-running. And that's like the nicest way to run these. Um, and you can also run them um, I'm going with the Mega. It's not going to be very big. It's only, you know, one panel, but it does work. And uh, we also have some code for Raspberry Pi in our GitHub repo. So do check that out. And yeah. then I'm going to show the 5 millimeter. So this is the 6 millimeter. And then I'm going to unplug it. 32 by 64? These are 32 by 64 pixels. Yes. And then this is the 5 millimeter pitch. I'm going to show the difference. Oh, can you go to the... Uh, to what? To you? To, to me, yeah. Wow. It's a, <laughs> Oh, no, it's falling apart. Hold on. Hold Back on. to the photo. No, 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 no. I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> um, so this is the 5 millimeter pitch, so compare that to the 6 millimeter pitch. So, sorry, this is much smaller, but it's still quite big and looks quite beautiful. And then, so the deal is we actually don't have the 4 millimeter pitch because they sent us the wrong thing, but we do have the 3 millimeter and the three millimeters are like totally gorgeous because they're extremely um, fine pitch LEDs. Um, not even that much more expensive. Hold on, let me hook this up. Bam! So this is the, oh, 
This is the three millimeter pitch. So this is the same size as um, the 16 by 32 matrix, but has four times as many four times as many LEDs. This is like really beautiful. And you know, like if you have, you do have to clock the data out, but if you have the capability to run if you have BeagleBone or an Arduino or Raspberry Pi or a propeller, you can drive these. It's a great way to have a lot of LEDs. This is like the easiest way to have a matrix of LEDs. Much better than soldering up your own boards, I think. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous screens. Yes. Okay, next up, which one do you want to do? Okay, now we're going to do the dot stars. Dot stars, all right. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to, so, so here we start go. Start there, and you can just go through them, and I'll, I'll talk. So these are the dot star LEDs, and these are really similar looking to NeoPixel. So if you're familiar with NeoPixel LEDs, and I'm wearing these fine things. These are very interesting because they are LEDs with a microcontroller inside of the LED itself. And so the LED pins, instead of having like red, green, blue, ground, like most analog LEDs, you actually clock data to them and you tell it what color you want the LED. And you can clock data down from one to the other. You can chain them. So data in, data out. You can like chain as many as you want, like an infinite number, really. It's 144 here. But you can go, if you have the memory for it, you can have as many as you want. And you set the color of the LED, and it actually does the PWM for you. So this is really, really great. If you compare to these matrices that you have to clock the data continuously, these are self-running. So they're excellent for processors that they want to set the color, and then they go off and do other things, sensors or LED, other LEDs or Wi-Fi or button presses or displays or whatever. Um, and here's the cool thing about dot star LEDs and why we have a different name for them and they're not called NeoPixels. Even though they're very, very similar to NeoPixels in that they're LED and the processors inside of them and you clock them and they have PWM, they have two things that make them significantly better compared to NeoPixel in my opinion. Um, one, they do not use a one wire protocol. There's two wires clocking data and it's not timing specific. You can use any processor or microcontroller that can do up down pins to control these. They don't have any specific timing or like the, you know, if there's a delay, they'll latch. It's basically like you have to spend a special spend send a special signal to start and a special signal to end. The all zeros and all Fs. But in between you can clock at any rate. So it's great for use with like a Raspberry Pi on any pins or like a propeller if you don't want to use a whole processor and has to do timing. It works great with an Arduino or like a basic stamp or the Esperino or like anything, any kind of processor, any kind of microcontroller. It's just two wires, clock and data used with the up and down, very, very simple to use. And so they're much more portable because I know the thing with NeoPixels, if NeoPixel hasn't been ported to your processor of choice, or you don't have the right clock, you're not clocking at the exact right rate because you have a 12 megahertz clock instead of eight or whatever, it doesn't work. These don't have that problem, it's very nice. Also, you can clock them at extremely high speeds. NeoPixels, you can only do 800 kilohertz because it's a fixed frequency speed. But these, we clock these at 32 megahertz without a problem and they, they work just fine. You can probably even do faster. That's the fastest that we had the capability to do at the time because we had a Raspberry Pi do it. Chances are you can go even faster. So 32 megahertz or more. So very, very fast updates. You can write to the strip it, almost as fast as you can possibly clock it out because I don't think even 72 megahertz on processors can't go faster than 32 or so megahertz. Okay. Okay. So that's great. And then the third thing that makes them really, really cool is that the update rate for the PWM is 20 kilohertz. And so compared to the NeoPixel, which has 400 kilohertz, these update very, very, the PWM is very smooth and very fast. So you, when you wave the strips around, you don't see the dither points. You don't see the individual ladies turning on and off. Like you can't. Like, I mean, you look really, really, really closely, but you pretty much can't. And so these look very good when you're doing um, lots of color manipulation because you don't see flicker effects at the ends of the brightness spectrum, which you sometimes see with NeoPixel. And also if it's moving, it looks completely smooth. You can't tell that it's being pulsed with modulated. It looks like perfectly smooth. So you can use these for persistence of vision. Trade-off is you have to use two wires. You can't use one wire and they're a little bit more expensive. And we don't have them in other shapes. We only have them in strips right now, but um, they're really, really awesome. We're going to be using some very fun projects. Light painting would benefit greatly from these. Precision okay. vision, costuming if you're moving around. Okay. Light effects. These are beautiful. We have them in 30, 60, and 144 LEDs per meter. Okay. Lady Ada, besides you, the star of the show tonight, I think, is this. Okay. Finally. Yay. Dun, Yay. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. It's hat. 
Dun, Number da, two. Da, 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 da. Like we said, we're working on a lot of hats. Dun, da, 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 Wait, what? what's going on? Are you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay, great. So um, we are doing hats. It's hat time. I know we promised to do hats a few months ago, and we took a little bit of break. We did these dot stars. We did these matrices. We did other cool stuff and Adafruit IO. And now we're back to hats. So these are plug-on daughter boards for the Raspberry Pi. And the hat is a specification by the Pi Foundation for the size and shape. It's the same size as the Model A Plus Raspberry Pi. It also fits very nicely into, well, if you hide me for a second, you'd see it um, fits perfectly. You're hidden into uh, the Raspberry Pi Model B cavity, the space between the USB port, Ethernet port, and the case. And so which means it fits very nicely into a case and you can close it. So this is a 2.2 inch TFT, and it's actually the same um, basic chip and display and resolution as the Pi TFT 2.8, which is very, very popular, but this does not have a touch screen. So it's less expensive because there's no touch screen, um, and also you don't touch it. Whatever, but you can't know, maybe, touch you can't touch this. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, we got glowing LEDs, um, and I can show it on the overhead. But it is a very beautiful, and what's nice is that, of course, it works with the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus or A Plus, and it fits quite nicely. It has four little buttons you can press. It comes assembled. All the surface mount stuff is assembled. You have to solder on the header. And here's my demo, and there's a good pen here. Hold on, let me see if I can zoom in. Hold on, zooming in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I can go deeper. Okay, that's right. the most I can zoom. Um, so this you can see, I'm just logged into the login prompt, um, and then I'm just going to use this keyboard, and oh, hold on, can log in, and it just you know using our um, Raspbian image works great. You just plug it in, you can basically run it, and then you can run um, programs like, of course, anything on the text console because it shows up the text console. You write programs in Pygame or in SDL that is supported. Um, you can actually run X. X will, hold on. Only if you type in start X properly. You can run X11, and so any program that runs X11 will run on it. Um, it can kind of do video, but I would, you know, it's good for images and like basic interactive stuff. It's a small screen and small resolution, it's only 320 yeah. by 240, so you can't like, you can run a web browser, but it's it's small, guys. So just be aware of that. But um, if you just want to have a small interface, if you want to just display graphs, or if you want to have um, some information that the Raspberry Pi is telling you, um, it's a very beautiful display, very clear. Um, it doesn't have a touch screen again, but there's these four buttons that you can yeah, press down here to do stuff. Good work, lady. It's a hat. I know you've been working on this for a while. I know. Okay. So with that being said, guess what? You've completed your journey of the evening. Okay. You did it, Lady Ada. We the had so many there. different glowing things. You did it. 